Welcome back, learners! In our last video, we talked about fabric and fabric design of different countries in the Southeast Asian region. We discovered how important fabric and fabric design is, especially in their culture and history. Now, in this video, we will be focusing on their arts, crafts, and sculpture. Let's get into it! By looking at these pictures, what goes to your mind? Even though these countries have distinct cultures due to their religions and beliefs, there are still similarities in their artistic forms and expression. It is seen in big traditional events and simple everyday objects which is a window of their culture and their artworks. Now, let us talk about Thailand's Flying Sky Lantern. This festival is called the Loi Krathong Festival and is celebrated on the night of the 12th full moon, usually in November. Tourists flock these festivals and Chiang Mai is known to have the brightest and most spectacular celebration of the Loi Kratong. These lanterns are made from rice paper with a bamboo frame. Some create their own, while others buy it. These are fueled by a small candle or fuel cell, which heats up the inside of the lantern and causes it to float. From science, we know that warm air rises. They also write wishes on these lanterns and even write to people that already passed away for they believed that their messages would go to the heavens. They also leave their contact numbers on the lantern. Once it burns out and floats back to the ground, if other people get it and gave it back to the owner, they will get rewarded. Moving on, let us now see the handicrafts of Cambodia and Laos. The indigenous people of Cambodia in the rural areas commonly called the Highlanders create handicrafts as part of their traditional culture and livelihood. One of the ingenuities of the Cambodians is their natural way of paper making. Because of the abundance of mulberry tree or known in their country as sa, they were used to create paper. They then used this paper for calligraphy and to make other products such as festival decorations, umbrellas, fans, and kites. In northern Laos, they also used this paper to create lampshades, writing paper, greeting cards, and the like. Let us see how this paper making from Sa is done. This is the Balmeri tree. What they use is the bark of this tree. They don't cut the tree but only get the bark and sun dry it. Once it is dried, they use a stone mortar and pestle to beat the bark of the mulberry to pulverize it. Then, in a beagle container, they put the pulp in a frame with mesh, soaked in water, and evenly distribute the beaten pulp. Once spread evenly, they take the frame out of the water and sun dry it. Sometimes, they add decorations like leaves or flowers and even colors before they dry the paper. Aside from writing on these papers, they also create other products which will be sold in their local markets that tourists and their locals too enjoy. Now, let us see how these Vietnam silk paintings are created. From our previous lesson, we learned that Vietnam is famous for their golden thread silk. These fabrics are also the medium they use in creating their Tran Lua or their French influence silk painting. The usual subject of their paintings are countryside, landscapes, pagodas, historical events, and common life scenarios. It is hard to paint on silk. That is why the paintings they create, the combination of color, and their fabric represents harmony in nature. 
The Indonesian wayang kulit is one of the most famous shadow puppetries in the world. Wayang means show and shadow, while kulit means skin. The skin is referred to the leather material used to create the puppets. The best puppets are made of young female buffalo parchment, and curing this leather can take up to 10 years. These puppet shows are derived from a Japanese Hindu Buddhist tradition where the puppets depict epic stories of God and accompanied by their musical ensemble called Gamelan. The Malaysian wow kite is a uniquely designed kite as seen in this picture. Flying kites is a tradition in Malaysia where farmers use them as scarecrows in their fields and to lull their babies to sleep so that they continue with their work. The Pasir Gudang World Kite Festival showcased different designs of wow kites in different sizes and colors. This is a much celebrated festival in Malaysia, usually on the first quarter of the year. Malaysian had designed different types of wow kites but still base it on their traditional design, adding and editing parts to make it fly easier, higher, and longer in the skies. The songkok of Brunei, also known as pesi or kopia, is a traditional head accessory from Muslim males worn in their formal gatherings. In Brunei, these headgears are categorized into three. The dastar, a simpler kind which is a cloth that is tied around the head. The songkok, kopia or pesi, a cap made from velvet. And the tegkolok or serban that looks like a turban. Today, songkok is still worn in Brunei for it is an important part of their tradition. It comes in different variations of colors which suits the taste and style of the person who will wear it. Now, in this part of our lesson, let us discover the most known sculptures of the Southeast Asian countries. Sculptures are landmarks that shows architectural and sculptural designs which focuses on the cultural beliefs, traditions, and religions of the community. These symbols hold stories and messages of their culture and tradition. In Thailand, their sculptures date back to 4,000 years which are created from wood, stone, clay, and other metals. One of their famous landmark, the Wat Pho Temple, holds the famous reclining Buddha created from a plaster of brick core and finish in gold leaf. This gigantic sculpture is 46 meters long and 13 meters high. In Cambodia, they are famous for the Angkor Wat. It was once created for Vishnu, one of the principal deities of Hinduism. But after several years, Angkor Wat is used as a Buddhist temple until now. Angkor Wat played a big role in converting Cambodians from Hinduism to Buddhism and it is one of the pillars of their nation, which is why it is included at the center of their flag. Cambodians are famous for their stone carvings until today. They create stone miniatures of Angkor Wat and Buddha and sell their products to tourists. Lao people not only use stones for carving, but also precious metals such as bronze, gold, and silver. The two most famous statues in Laos are the Phra Sai and Phra Bang, both casted in gold. The Phra Sai is a loot carried from Thailand while the Phra Bang is a gift used to spread Buddhism in Laos. These sculptures are believed to contain relics of Buddha inside it. In Vietnam, sculptures came from religious traditions of Taoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism. The Dong Noi Cave holds 100,000-year-old carvings inside it. While in Indonesia, sculptures are made from stone, bronze, and Iron Age materials. There are numerous archaeological sites in Indonesia which holds their rich history from the pre-Hindu, pre-Buddhist, and pre-Islamic beginnings. The most amazing sculptures are the Asmat wooden sculpture of Papua, the Dayak wooden mask and sculpture, and 
One of their famous landmarks is the Borobudur, built in the 8th century, which houses 504 Buddha sculptures of different sizes and 2,672 relics, which tells about the life of Buddha. In Malaysia, relief sculpting is the most common. These sculptures are partially carved into or out of another surface. This creates two-dimensional or three-dimensional art forms that rely on planes and bases for support. The three main types of relief sculptures in Malaysia are the Alto relief, which is almost completely carved from its surface, the bas relief that barely extends past the base, and the sunken reliefs which is carved into the surface rather than out of it. These are examples of Malay wood carvings, the ukiran halus, which is a carving of relief patterns, while the ukiran kasar refers to the carvings of larger objects. Both are used on home furniture and as decorations on houses and temples. Singapore's most famous sculpture is the Merlion, which is a symbol of their country since 1964. The former name of Singapore is Singapura, which means the Lion City, while the Mer means Sea, which is the origin of the city, being a fishing village before. This is also based on folklores and myths depicting sea beasts and magical sea creatures. In Brunei, most of the sculptures are functional. Their craftsmen created functional items such as ornamental decors, lamps, jars, and others from bronze and silver. That's it, learners! To wrap this lecture up, remember the following. Wayang Kulit is traditional puppetry in Indonesia which features the culture and belief of its people. Kite making and flying are a major part of Malaysian culture and tradition. Wow is regarded as an art form. Loy Kratong is a beautiful Thai festival celebrated every 12th full moon of the lunar year. Wood carving serves both a functional and aesthetic purpose in Malaysian architecture. The merlion, a mythical creature that is half lion and half fish, is the national symbol of Singapore. Borobudur Temple is one of the largest Buddhist temples in the world. We hope that you have learned something from this lecture. Stay safe and healthy and see you on the next video. Have a nice day!